Welcome to Advocate Today. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. The Pentagon will soon implement a new law requiring mental health services for troops. This is all happening during Mental Health Awareness Month. According to a defense official, the Brandon Act will be finally put into practice more than a year after it was passed. The law requires the military to provide a mental health evaluation for any service member who asks for one. The Defense Department has been trying to figure out logistics. The Brandon Act is named after Brandon Caserta. The 21-year-old sailor wrote a letter in 2018 saying he wanted to die by suicide due to constant hazing and bullying. Records show 519 service members died by suicide in 2021. The widow of Stephen Twitch Boss is addressing his suicide for the first time. Allison Holker tells People Magazine that she didn't know the dancer and Ellen DeGeneres show DJ was depressed until he died by suicide four months ago. She says he tried to be Superman for her and for their three children. Holker says men have told her Boss's suicide has helped them understand and express their own feelings. If you or someone you know is struggling with mental health, Call the 988 hotline. It provides immediate help and resources for those in need of it. Again, the number is 988. Did you know that dogs can perceive time by changing smells throughout the day? Or that cats think of humans as big hairless cats? These are just some of the quirky things our pets do. Not only are our furry friends life companions, but they improve the mental health of their owners. When the world went into lockdown in 2020, many turned to animals for comfort and company. And according to a new study from the American Psychiatric Association, a whopping 88% of owners say their pets have a positive impact on their mental health. 69% of pet owners say they help reduce stress and anxiety, along with providing unconditional love and support. The study also shows that dogs and cats are equally beneficial for mental health and companionship. Despite America's love for pets, animals are still under threat. According to the ASPCA, 920,000 animals are euthanized each year. That's why the Best Friends Animal Society is hoping to make every shelter and every community a no-kill shelter by 2025. For Mental Health Awareness Month, I had the pleasure of speaking with Chief Mission Officer Holly Sizemore about how pets impact mental health. Hi, welcome Holly Sizemore, Chief Mission Officer of Best Friends Animal Society, and also Rose. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. Incredible. Yes. Well, you know, I, I think it's so important to discuss um, animal rescue and also, you know, pet ownership. So I'm really excited to dive into this. And I'd love to start by hearing a little bit about how you became involved in this business or, you know, this work. I've been in this business for a long time. I actually was contemplating going to graduate school as a young person and certain events happened in my life where I came in contact with my local shelter mm -hmm. and I was trying to help some stray cats that were eating near a restaurant dumpster where I worked and I called the shelter to get assistance for them and was really dismayed to hear them say, really, by law, I could not feed them or risk being fined $50 a day, and that, as a responsible citizen, my obligation was to trap them and take them to the shelter where they would be killed. And it was a life-changing moment for me. You are the chief mission officer. Would you share a bit about the mission of Best Friends, and especially the uh, being a leader in the no-kill movement? The mission of Best Friends is to create a time of no more homeless pets. Mm -hmm. And the main way we're doing that right now is to end the killing of all cats and dogs in U.S. shelters by the year 2025, which is fast approaching. We only have a few years to go, um, but we're excited to see the progress that we've made over the last decade or two, and we think we can get there. That's incredible. Uh, yeah, well, thank you. Um, also, would you share some of the upcoming priorities that Best Friends has, uh, including, you know, the, the foster programs, the spay neuter program, and I'd love to hear about the community cat program as well. Best Friends 
helps run a lot of our own programs, but we also are very much into empowering and aiding our other shelter partners all across the US. We have a network of over 4,500 shelters and rescue groups all aligned saying, we wanna save more lives. We want every savable animal in shelters to be saved. And so of course, adoption, spay neuter, volunteering, donating are the key components to the success of that big goal. There's over 4,000 brick and mortar shelters in the US. Mm -hmm. Over half of them have already reached that no kill benchmark, which we mean by they're saving at least 90% or more of all the animals entering their shelters. And it's 90%, not 100%, because we know some animals do come in and they cannot be saved. The merciful thing to do is to euthanize them. They say they've been hit by a car and you know, no, no med medical miracle can save them. Mm -hmm. And so the goal is, is that any pet that can be saved will be saved. Mm -hmm. So adoption, fostering, volunteering for your local shelter is, mm -hmm. are just the foundations of success. Yeah. Well, you know, there's something that I never really considered, which is animal friendly legislation. I just didn't think about it. And, you know, something that, um, again, I just have never considered. Would you talk a little bit about legislation and also pet friendly housing? It is such a barrier to, like, you know, non pet friendly housing is such a barrier to adoption. And I just not something that's been on my radar. So I thought it was really fascinating to see, uh, see that on your website. Legislation is really key. It's the reason I got into this. You know, I told you my story of the laws back then sure. were if you were feeding a stray cat, you were a criminal. And to criminalize compassion, what, you know, what a crazy way to try to um, address pet homelessness. Now, back then, there were so many more animals entering shelters. Back then, in the late 80s, early 90s, we were thinking estimated upwards 15, 17 million animals were being killed mm. in U.S. shelters. And now that's down to less than half a million, but we still have a ways to go. And so part of what we do is fighting these bad laws that make saving lives harder and really supporting good laws that help um, create safe and humane communities. Yeah. Uh, you know, we talk, we've talked a lot about saving pets, but something that we know happened happens, uh, but that really came into focus during lockdowns in the pandemic is how pets save humans, uh, especially those of us who are isolated. And I know I had just rescued a cat in December of 2019, and we wrote out lockdowns together. And I, I really, you know, am grateful for this living creature in my house. Uh, so would you talk a little bit about the positive benefits of pet ownership? Most people who have a pet know this already, right? They give us great joy. And it's been proven, however, that there are mental health benefits of having a pet. In fact, they say looking into your dog's eyes. Rose, you want to look in my eyes? <laughs> yeah, look at my eyes. That that releases the love hormone, dopamine yeah. and um, mm -hmm. oxytocin. And so many studies have proven that petting an animal reduces blood pressure and stress, just that immediately de-stressor. Yeah. And so this cliche that we sometimes hear, who saved who? We hear that a lot in our animal right. welfare world. Mm -hmm. I rescued a pet and saved its life because I adopted, but really, in fact, that animal saved me. And when you adopt an animal, you don't think that maybe that animal will be a critical support system for you if you're going through a tough time, a divorce or a big life change or someone that you love passing away. And yet we hear these stories over and over again at Best Friends about how these little guys come in and give us the ability to cope and give us more joy and love than we could have ever anticipated. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, Holly, how can folks find out more about uh, Best Friends? People can go to bestfriends.org. Yeah. We have what's called the Pet Life Saving Dashboard as well, where you can go in and see how your community is doing in regards to filling their life-saving needs, what you can do to help your local shelter, what the save rate is in your local community, and how you can get involved. That's incredible information. Thank you so much. Holly Sizemore, Chief Mission Officer of Best Friends, and also Rose, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, for me as well. 
Thank you so much to Holly and Rose for joining me. The Best Friends Animal Society is doing incredible work for our furry friends. Visit bestfriends.org to learn more and to get involved. And you can visit us at The Advocate Channel for more content and coverage that advocates for all. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and I'll see you next time.